All right, guys, we're going to talk about aspects of personal appearance today. And at the end, we are going to talk about one of your performance objective assignments. So please pay attention. Remember, that's for 30% of your grade. So yin versus yang. Have you guys heard of this before? This is an ancient philosophy where it's a concept of dualism. Okay, so opposite or contrary forces actually tend to be complementary, interconnected um, in the natural world. And so this plays into fashion as well. And we're going to talk about how different types of fashion actually helps each other and interrelates to each other. So the first one we're going to talk about is yin. So yin styles tend to be delicate. They tend to have curved lines, rounded shapes, small scales bows, ruffles, okay? So if we look at this picture, we can see some ruffles, we can see a lot of curved lines, a lot of rounded shapes here, um, a lot of small scale items as well. Yang, however, is a little bit more sturdy. It has straight lines, angular shapes, a little bit more large scale items. Buttons and pleats are also usually common. So we can see a lot of straight lines happening here on this picture. Um, a little bit more of an angular shape. You've got a little bit more of a triangle here. Large scale items as well. So why does this even matter? I'm sure you're like, whatever. This matters because it allows you to create harmony with your personality, create balance with your physical appearance, and communicate a message with no words. Remember that with fashion, you get to say something without even speaking. So when we're talking about yin and fashion, we're talking more about a receding. And yang is more advancing, and we're going to talk about each one. So interpreting the yin and the yang, if we look at this photo right here, you've got a little bit more soft fabric. That's yin, pliable fabric, yin. You've got some butterfly print, a little bit more of a muted color, a bit of bright red here. Um, and this nice fun print, it's a little bit more small scale and a bit more delicate curved lines again, okay, rounded shapes. Now this right here, you've got yang, remember that it's a little bit more sturdy, it's got a structural garment here. Um, you've got bright color, crisp fabric, a large scale print, that polka dot, um, as well as a cool overtone. You've got an all over pattern, um, this is more yang than it is yin. This still is a bit more, um, it's got some yang and yin in, in it. I would say that the curved shape really brings it into yin, but that large scale polka dot for me is what really makes it, along with the structure, a more of a yang item. So what are these two dresses communicating? We've got more of, of a fun here and more of a serious dress here. So yin has more of a shapely curve. We've got that natural feminine curve coming in, a little bit of a low contrast pattern, and some curved lines here with that cap sleeve. This is a straighter shaped dress, okay? It's ordered, it's got a geometric pattern, straight lines, okay? Now, these two dresses are telling you two different things. This is a fun dress. I would wear this perhaps to a wedding, a garden party, a um, bridal shower, okay? This is a more serious dress. This to me is a business-like dress. This is something that I would choose to wear to work. That darker color especially is speaking to me for that. Now, yang and yin both have different prints that they navigate towards. These are more yin here on this side. The reason why is that small scale print. I would say it again, small scale print. These ones are more yang because of that large scale print. And these ones meet somewhere in the middle, okay? I want to really communicate with you guys that you can be in the middle of yin and yang. You don't have to be either one. You can choose to work within the two, okay? Remember, this is dualism. Appearing more yin right here. This is a more yin outfit, and this is a more yang of an outfit, okay? If it's got any sort of structural... Um, piece or if it's darker large scale it's going to be yang okay if it's going to be a little bit more delicate um, more of a drapey kind of fabric uh, light color low contrast that is going to be more yin okay so 
Again, I want to say this again and again and again, you can work within both types, okay? So these two outfits have got a little, well, I guess there's three outfits, excuse me, have got a little bit of all of them in there, okay? So we're going to work from left to right here. The circular pattern dress is flared and it has like a very floral texture and it's being paired with another um like a delicate looking cardigan okay i would say this is a little bit more of a yin okay in the center you've got um horizontal and knits at a light color jacket that's yin but you've got some stiff fabric on that skirt that's going to be yang okay the white stripes here add some yang and then you've got a soft flowy top to add some yin here, okay? I don't want to move on just quite yet. So um, I know that you guys in your packet have got this guy that you've got to do right here. So you need to order these from most yang-like to yin-like. So I'm going to give you guys some time to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and pick up. All right, I hope that you went and did it. And now we're gonna check our answers. So the most Yang-like for me is going to happen to be um, letter C. The reason why, you've got some structural garment things happening here. You've got a little bit of a collar stuff, um, and then you've got that large scale print, okay? After that, number two, I would say is going to be letter A mostly because it's it doesn't have any extra stuff added to it yet okay now in the very center i would say that it's going to be letter e the reason why i choose letter e over letter b here is that large scale ruffle okay if it were smaller maybe i would switch it around that means number four is going to be b you've got a little bit smaller and delicate items here and our most yin like is letter D here. Okay, you've got some bows, some ruffles, and it's small scale. Okay, moving on to body types and silhouettes. So, when we talk about body types and silhouettes, we're going to talk about shape in general. Okay, and in fashion, we consider two things we consider your figure type, which is your body, and your garment shape. So, that's what you're wearing on top of your body, obviously, your garment. So, whatever you can wear something that's a little bit tight fitting and really reveals your figure type or you can wear something a little bit looser and that's going to give you a different shape or create an illusion of shape okay so our first shape is a rectangle a rectangular shape has an undefined waist they have a, sm a similar bust waist and hip measurement if you're a man it's going to be chest instead of bust um, your waist is never going to be more than eight inches different from your hips and your bust. Your arms and legs are going to be slimmer than the rest of your body, and usually you don't have any thigh bulges, okay? You're going to have a very box-like shape. However, if you want to change your shape, oh wait, I gotta show you some stuff. So you can really see it in men. Men typically have rectangle. Right here, you can see there's really, it's, it's just like a box, okay? But there are women who have a rectangle shape as well. So if you want to change your shape, if you want to create an illusion of having a smaller waist, you totally can do that by following all of the rules of rectangulars. I'm not gonna go over these in depth with you guys because honestly, it's going to matter depending on your specific shape. So you're gonna have a chance to figure that out today. If you're triangular, you're going to have wider hips and thighs, you're going to have narrow shoulders, curvy lower hips and rear are going to be your biggest part of your body, okay? Your face and your neck are going to seem sim uh, very slender, slender in relation to the rest of your body. So again, you can go through this if you'd like, but very um, there's a lot of people who are considered to be triangular or pear shape. Inverted triangle, here we go. We've got full bust, wide shoulders, and upper back is also very, very wide. Um, you've typically got narrow hips to create this upside down wedge shape. And 
um, your bust or your midriff is typically larger than the hips that produce that natural wedge, okay? And when I say larger, I'm not saying outward, I'm saying measurement this way in that direction. You're going horizontal, not like a belly, okay? All right, again, follow the rules if you want to change your shape, but we've got um, a good way to tell is always to look here and then you can really see that, okay? Hourglass, your figure is typically curvier. You've got hips and shoulders are about the same width. Your waist is typically very narrow and it's about nine inches smaller than either your chest or your hip measurement. Again, you can take a second to read through this if you are hourglass. Hourglass shape can be an illusion just like in the 1950s with this new look. There's a lot of people who are hourglass shaped and you can use fashion to your advantage to create this shape if you would like. So um, what you're going to do is take a measuring tape, okay, and you're going to measure your, I believe it's your hips, your um, waist and your chest and you're going to figure out what your shape is. This is really important for your upcoming assignment. So if you're an inverted triangle, I'm going to give you a second, come back, pause the video, you know. Your shoulders and your bust are larger than your hips, okay? Your shoulder or bust measurements are more than 5% bigger than your hip measurement. So an example I have here is if your shoulders measure 36 inches, your hips will be 34 and a fourth inch or smaller. So go ahead and get with a partner, measure your waist, hips, shoulders, bust, and then write down the answering. So you're going to go hip minus waist equals bust or chest minus your waist equals shoulder minus waist equals shoulder minus hip equals. This is going to um, help you figure out what shape you have. Okay. So your waist, if it's no more than 8 inches difference from your hip or your bust, you're going to be a rectangle. If your waist is about 9 inches smaller than your bust or hips, you're going to be an hourglass. If your hips are larger than 8 inches, then your waist or your bust are a triangle. And if your shoulder or your bust is larger than 8 inches compared to the waist or your hips, you're an inverted triangle. Now there's no good or bad shapes. I want to emphasize that. Um, it's all just what it is, okay? You can change how you look with fashion if you want to look like a different type of shape but this is important to note because for our next assignment we are going to be designing a wardrobe so please pay attention because the rest of the stuff also matters for that we are going to talk about personal coloring and there's three types of coloring there's warm cool and neutral cool toned if you have cool undertones your skin is going to lean to be pink red or blue Okay, your skin tone is typically fell, fair or pale. You have light hair like a light brown or a natural blonde. And you're going to have typically gray or blue eyes. The best colors to wear if you are a cool toned person is to take your inspiration from the cool end of the spectrum. You're going to go with sky blues, frosty purples, light grassy tones, anything pastel. If you like to wear warm colors, you can try a lipstick type red or a super pale yellow. Avoid palettes that are really orange or bright yellowy because they'll overpower you. If you are warm toned, then your skin is going to feel like it has more of a yellow or a peachy or golden tone to it. Your skin tone is typically dark, olive or golden, and you typically will have dark hair, like black, dark brown, auburn. You'll usually have brown or brown hazel eyes as well. The best colors to wear is to take your inspiration from the warm end of the spectrum. You're going to think oranges, rusty tones, um, a camel, all thing earthy. If you love cool hues, then you're going to want to go for the warmer version, okay? So like olive or violet or orchid. Neutral toned. Now, those with neutral tones have difficulty figuring out what they're, they're warm or they're cool because they're a hybrid of both. Um, your veins are... It's hard to see if they're blue or they're green, and your skin tone can burn in the sun or not. It just really depends. So if you are neutral, you're going to be a mix of both warm and cool, and so you have access to that whole spectrum. You're very, very lucky in this regard. You can pretty much wear 
any color you want. Um, but I would say avoid things that are too neon because they will throw you off balance. So that's just because you need to kind of play in the middle there. Okay, so here we can see the warm end of the spectrum and the cool end of the spectrum, okay? And then we've got a little bit of the neutrals down here. But remember, if you're neutral, you can kind of play around in anywhere, but don't, you want to find a good balance. You don't want to lean either or, okay? But when in doubt, if you're not sure what you are, these three colors are going to look good on everybody, okay? They're tried and true. Blush, this is a neutral like pink. Red, not all reds are for everybody. You need to find your particular shade of red. And black plays well with other colors. It's very neutral. Now, we're going to talk about your next assignment. If you feel like you have a closet full of clothes but nothing to wear, never. well, I've got some information for you. So let's think about a wardrobe in a very different way. It's not always about having a ton of things, okay? They don't coordinate, then it's just a bunch of random clothes that don't work. Try finding clothes that you can mix and match and that they all work well together. You can be stylish and have less pieces of clothing in your closet. It's all about knowing how to coordinate. So we're going to build our wardrobe. There are eight basic pieces of clothing and these are key pieces that you should have in your closet and you can use them to create more than two dozen different outfits. So they are a long sleeve t-shirt, a short sleeve t-shirt, a tank top, a button down shirt that's typically tailored, jeans, dress pants, lightweight cardigan, a little black dress. If you're a man, it's going to be a suit. Okay. So these are super important and you should definitely have them. When I talk about these, they don't have to be in the neutral spectrum of colors. Um, they just need to be playing with your personal coloring and your yin and yang balance, okay? So think about that as well. Now there's six trendy additions and these are currently in style, um, colors and patterns. They're typically fun. They're a little bit more of a fad piece. You want to use them to mix and match. The eight pieces are classical. These are just what is trendy right now. So a woven shirt, skirt, pattern jeans, dressy jacket, casual jacket, a pattern scarf, okay? So instead of a pattern scarf, maybe you could do like a fun belt, okay? Um, these are going to be what's trendy at the time. You're going to want to use these to mix it up. Skirt, for the guys, obviously you're not going to wear a skirt, um, so you just want to do another pair of jeans or um, shorts possibly. So, accessories here. We've got a leather belt going on and a wedge shoe. Notice that they're numbered. That's a little bit odd. I'm going to show you why in a second. So, again, we've got some trendy versus um, classic pieces, your basics. These are all repeating, okay? These are all repeating. You've got your eight basics and your six trendies making all of these different outfits. I did not change anything. These are all the same. Okay, so okay guys, so what we're going to do is talk about your wardrobe planning assignment. This is your performance objective number six assignment. It's worth 30% of your grade. What you're going to need to do is find eight basic pieces of clothing. All right, tell me why they're basic. We just went over that. Then you need to find six trendy pieces of clothing. Tell me why they're um, trendy. We just went over that. Then you're going to create 20 different outfits using these 14 pieces of clothing. And for each outfit, you need to tell me which ones are trendy and which ones are basic, just like what you saw on the slides. So I've got a whole bunch of links here on my portfolio for you to try. What I want you to do is tell me, make a slide like this, okay? I want you to make um, a basic pieces section and a trendy pieces section. And don't forget to label, okay? So I've got number one outfit, number two outfit, number three outfit. But this is what's going to be really great. Using letters for your basics and numbers for your trendies. Instead of having them all be numbered, it's going to be really helpful for your brain, at least for me, okay? So if we look at number one outfit, 
remember letters are for your basics and numbers are for your trendies this person put together a basic shirt with a trendy pair of pants you can see again you've got a bit of trendy versus a little bit of basic in each one of these outfits so this is what I expect for your definition. So your basic pieces would be jeans and a tank top, okay? Your trendy would be your polka dot jacket. This could be dressy or casual, depending on what it's paired with. Accessories labeled as your black half boots. So what you can do is you can either use the websites that I've linked here, or you can go through on your packet. Let's see through here I have a wardrobe analysis assignment here for you now I recommend that you do this regardless of the way that you're choosing to do this assignment but um, you're going to evaluate your lifestyle okay first you're gonna want to tell me what do you do where do you go what kind of stuff do you wear usually when you do these things okay then go through your closet, find your basics, find your trendies, okay? You can make 20 outfits. I challenge you to use the clothes in your closet because you'll feel a lot more empowered after you do this assignment. But if you don't want to, if you want to just go shopping, use these links, okay? And then you'll be able to create outfits like this. If you would prefer to put them like this on a slide and just take pictures and upload them onto Google Drive, totally fine with me. All right, but that's it for, for today. I hope you guys have a great day and have fun with this project.